Water snakes are some of the most unlucky snakes in the world. No matter how hard they try, they can't really seem to not look like cotton mouths to most people. Basically, this video is going to help you identify the non-venomous water snakes in your area from the venomous cotton mouth, aka water moccasin. Now, this video is mainly going to qualify for people that live in the southeastern section of the United States, and it's mainly going to apply to the inland portion of the southeast. So if you live on the southeastern coast, this video isn't going to apply to you as much because there are a few water snake species that live in those areas that don't get shown in this video. Now the last thing I'm going to throw out before we get this video rolling is that you're going to hear me use the term Nerodia a lot. Now just so you understand what I mean when I say the word Nerodia, Nerodia is basically the genus name for all North American water snakes essentially. So when I say the word Nerodia, basically all I'm saying is water snake. It's just another way to say water snake. This is also going to be a slightly longer video, so if you go into the description, you'll find a bunch of timestamps that you can click on that will lead you to specific parts of the video, so you can find exactly what you're looking for without having to waste a bunch of time. Alright, with all of that said, here's the video. I hope you all learned something, and uh, stay safe out in the woods, guys. Okay, so now basically I'm gonna go over every species of snake that I've got in this bucket here. I've got all the water snakes, I've got the cotton mouth, he's in a bag. But uh, we're gonna start off with the water snakes. So I think it would be fitting to start off with the one that's, you know, the most common and the one that you're the most likely to see. And uh, that one is the yellow-bellied water snake, so I'm gonna get him out here. Alright, there you are. Okay, look at that snake. So this guy right here, this is a ye ow! You had to do that. So uh, this is a yellow-bellied water snake. This is the most common water snake that you're likely to see in probably the entirety of the Mid-South. They, uh, just like all water snakes, can live pretty much anywhere in any body of water. Typically these snakes, you're gonna see them in a more swampy habitat. You can find them in lakes, you can find them in ponds, and you can find them in streams. But I've noticed that amongst all the Nerodia species, this one is typically the dominant species as far as a lot of uh, suburban swamps go. Now of course this is not a deciding factor as to which snake you've got just based on where you are, but it's something to keep in mind because it can help you identify the snake later on. So how do you identify this snake? It's all in the name, yellow. These snakes almost always will have a yellow belly. But you may be thinking to yourself, well, why would I see the belly of this snake? And you're absolutely right. You're probably not going to. Pretty much a way that you can, uh, you know, tell this snake without having to pick it up and flip it over, because you never want to do that unless you really know your snakes and you know what you're doing like I do. You'll notice on its lip, its lip scales always are yellow. And, uh, you know, that's a great way to tell from a decent distance that uh, you've got a yellow-bellied water snake and not something else. Now, on the top, these snakes are going to be about, you know, like this, okay? This is a great example of one. Pretty much a solid gray or light brown color with maybe just a hint of a pattern in there, all right? But usually their pattern is going to be very faint at this age. When they're babies, their pattern is a lot brighter. They look like a totally different snake. I'll put up some footage of that so you can see that better. A lot of the times, even when these snakes are crawling, you can sometimes catch a hint of uh, the yellow on their flanks or on their sides, okay? So that's another way you can kind of tell it's a yellow-bellied and not something else. Another thing to keep in mind with this species is that you can find them really, really close in proximity to humans, okay? If you have a backyard water feature or a pond or something like that, even just in your yard, if it's got frogs or fish in it, these guys will probably be in there, okay? So you don't have to be far away from people in order to find this snake. This is a very human-tolerant species. All right, but now y'all got to look at the first snake, the uh, yellow-bellied water snake right here. I'm going to go ahead and put him away, and we're going to get the next species of snake out that uh, is commonly confused for water moccasins. So, the next species of snake, I'm going to go ahead... Ooh, <laughs> someone's wanting to bite me. The next species of snake I'm going to go ahead and get out is a species called a Midland water snake. And here he is. Beautiful, beautiful snake. These snakes, uh, in a lot of cases, are more commonly confused for copperheads than they are for cottonmouths, okay? You can tell, obviously, by that super-duper bright coloration. They're beautiful snakes. So, 
How do you identify this snake, the Midland water snake? Well, like all other species of Nerodia, they can potentially be found in any wetland habitat. Woo! <laughs> so they can be found in lakes, uh, rivers, streams, ponds. One thing I have noticed with this species though, is that they are a specialist of stream habitat and river habitat. So if you're in a creek or a stream or maybe kayaking along a river, you're a lot more likely to see this species of Nerodia than you are other species. So now if you want to identify this snake just by its appearance, let's go ahead and do that. Typically these snakes are going to be reddish in color. If they're not red, a lot of the times they're going to be in some kind of shade of brown, light or dark brown. If you look at the front part of the snake, the area that's closer to the head and the neck of the snake. Usually what you'll see with this species is a light colored hourglass, not a dark colored. This is where people get these snakes confused for copperheads a lot. The hourglass of this snake is the light color, all right? It's not the dark color like it would be on a copperhead or a cottonmouth for that instance. Gonna bite me? Woo, yeah he is. Now when you move down the body of the snake towards the tail, that hourglass pattern is going to break up and it's not going to be an hourglass anymore. So basically what it's going to look like, there's going to be circles or blotches going down the back of the snake on the very, very top of it. In between those dark colored blotches on the very top, it's going to have dark colored bars. <laughs> going right in between them on its sides. That's the main way that you can identify this species of snake just by its pattern. So last thing about this species, are they tolerant to people? Yes, they are extremely tolerant to people. You can find this species of snake in your neighborhood drainage ditch. I'm not kidding, I found tons of them in mine. I'm sure you could find them in yours too. So that's about all with this species of snake. I'm gonna go ahead and put him away and we're gonna get another species of snake out. All right. So the next species of water snake that we're going to get out of this here bucket is a diamondback water snake. Fun fact about the diamondback is that typically they get bigger than almost any other water snake species in the United States. And here he is. You can see this is a fairly large individual. So what do you got to know about the diamondback water snake? Well, they, just like any other water snake, can potentially be found in any type of water body. While this is true, I have noticed that these snakes are usually more plentiful in swamp habitat. So how do you identify this snake? They are called diamondback water snakes, and they do have diamonds. They're pretty hard to see unless you're really, really looking, and even if you are, they're not that noticeable. The way you're gonna identify this snake by its pattern is uh, if you look on its back, you're going to get dark colored squares going boop, 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 all the way down the back. In between these squares, similar to the Midland water snake, you're going to get dark bars going in between them on the side. Now what makes these different and is the reason why they earned the name Diamondback Water Snake is uh, a lot of the times you're going to get thinner lines going in between the bar and the blotch on the top that's going to connect them. This is not always going to be very apparent, which is why these snakes are typically more difficult to identify. But one thing that's really important to notice is the general color of this snake, which is greenish. These snakes have a green color scheme to them. So the blotches and the bars on the back that I was talking about are typically a pretty dark green color. And in between that, you're gonna get a more light green color. Now, are these snakes tolerant to humans? Yes, they are. Now, what I have noticed though, is that these snakes in a lot of cases are slightly less tolerant of humans than the other species are, but you can still find them in the middle of the city. All right, well, that is the diamondback water snake. So I'm gonna put him back. All right, let's get out the broad banded water snake. So I'm gonna go ahead and get him out real quick. So this species is the broad-banded water snake. Wow, look at that. This is probably the most distinct species of water snake that you could get in the southeast, all right? So the broad-banded water snake, what's there to know about this species? Well, once again, like every other water snake, they can technically be found in any type of body of water. While that is true, this species is a swamp specialist, all right? So you're much, much more likely to see this species in a swamp. So if you want to identify this snake just by its pattern and its coloration, it's pretty easy. This is the only species of Nerodia that you're going to get a distinctive orange coloration on. All right, you're not really gonna see that with hardly any other Nerodia species and you're definitely not gonna see that with a cottonmouth. You'll notice its head, it's orange. No other water snake is going to have an orange colored head. But if you look down its body, 
All right, you're gonna notice its pattern is very, very irregular. It's not consistent at all. It's got all these faded and irregular orange and yellow bands going down its back. If you go ahead and flip the snake over on its belly, it's got this yellow and kind of chestnut colored uh, checkerboard pattern going down its belly. It's absolutely beautiful. But yeah, that's the main way that you identify this species by its coloration and its pattern. So it makes these snakes quite a bit different from the other Nerodias. Its human tolerance is much, much lower than the other species of Nerodia. So these guys you're probably not going to get in a city park, okay? You're usually going to see these guys farther away from people. So if you're in the middle of a city and you think you see one of these snakes, there's a much lesser chance that it's this species as compared to the other Nerodia that we've got already. But there you go. That is the broad-banded water snake. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, there you go. She's been a sweetheart the whole time. Hasn't tried to bite once. And now we have one last snake. All right, guys, so I'm actually in Arkansas right now. This last snake I wanted to show you guys is something that I couldn't find in Memphis and haven't been able to in the 12 years I've lived there. This snake is very special. This is a Mississippi green water snake. Now this snake is one that you're probably not gonna see too often, all right? They're pretty rare. You know, they're not very tolerant of people at all. If you wanna identify this snake, first let's take a look at the habitat. These things love swamps, all right? They're swamp specialists. Of course, they could technically be found in just about any wetland habitat, but swamps, canals, things like that, you know, these guys love them. As far as their appearance goes, they're really similar looking to a diamondback water snake. On top, they pretty much have a checkerboard dark and light green color. It's hard to describe it in any other way. That's honestly what it looks like to me. It's like alternating bars going throughout the entire dorsal part of the back. That's really a good way to see that it's a green water snake. On the underside, they look Pretty similar to Diamondbacks, but just on steroids, pretty much. To me, their underside is much more colorful than that of a Diamondback. It's a lot more green in coloration, hence the name Green Water Snake. Now, one thing that's a show sign of the fact that it's a green water snake is its face. There's no bars on its lips. There's really no patterning on its head. Its head is very plain. Now, uh, what's their human tolerance like? Very low. Okay, they have a very, very low human tolerance. All right, these snakes, as I said earlier, are very rare and only like to hang out in areas that's far away from people. You know, you're not likely to see this snake in uh, a place that has a lot of human development. Fantastic snakes. You know, I love them. They're beautiful. I'm so happy I actually got to uh, include one of these in the video and I actually found one. But yeah, I think that's about it for the Mississippi Green. That's pretty much all you need to know about them. And uh, that, my friends, is all of the Nerodia water snakes that get confused for cottonmouths in the Mid-South. We have one last snake. You guys guessed it. It's the venomous one. It's the cotton mouth. So I'm gonna get the cotton mouth out. He's in the same bucket as these snakes, but he's in a bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the bag out. There she is. Okay. There he is. Woo! This is uh, the infamous cotton mouth. All right, so we've got the snake here. You wanna coil up for me there? If you wanna identify this snake by its markings, a lot of people will say that this is a solid black snake. This is not true. Cottonmouths do have a pattern. Now, as they get older, it gets darker and it's harder to see, but it's always there. And if you get close enough, usually within a safe distance even, you'll be able to see it, all right? It's always there. And basically what makes these snakes different as far as their pattern goes, it's got a clean hourglass shape going down its sides. If you were to look at it on top, a lot of people may say it looks like a saddle. And you can definitely say that as well. You know, they're the only one of these aquatic snakes that's going to have an unbroken, smooth pattern going down its sides. All the other water snakes, their patterns eventually broke up. They didn't stay as one singular unbroken pattern. Now, the big way I like to tell that it's a cotton mouth is if you look at its face, you're gonna notice it's got a dark stripe going straight through its eye. No other non-venomous water snake is going to have that dark stripe that's just going straight through its eye like that. And just beneath that dark stripe, typically you're going to get a lighter color. Usually it's white. Sometimes it can be a kind of like a greenish color, but usually it's white. That for me is the big way that you can tell this snake is a cottonmouth, even from a distance. You can see it from a good ways away. You don't have to get too close to the snake to see it. 
Just like water snakes, these snakes can be found in any type of water body. But typically, these guys strongly prefer swamps over other bodies of water. Now, are these snakes human tolerant? Technically, yes, they are. You can find them in the middle of the city. I have many times. Now, as you can see, this snake is within inches of me and he's not trying to attack me. He's not trying to bite me or chase me or any of that junk that you'll hear a lot of people say. They don't do any of that. The big thing with cotton mouths is just admire them from a distance, you know, stay a good ways away from them and they'll do the exact same thing for you. So those are the main ways that you can identify these individual species from each other. Now I'm going to go ahead and compare some just general characteristics of water snakes and cotton mouths. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of those right now. Another very common thing you're going to notice with water snakes versus cotton mouths is that water snakes are typically a lot more long and slender than cotton mouths are. You'll notice with this cotton mouth that he's, uh, he's pretty short and he's pretty fat. All right, that's a really good way to tell that it's a cotton mouth and not a water snake. As you can see with this yellow-bellied water snake here, he's quite a bit longer, and in comparison to the length of this snake, he is a bit more slender. Now that can be pretty hard to distinguish unless you've seen a lot of both snakes, so I definitely wouldn't call that a dead giveaway by any means, but it's something to keep in mind. Another nice way that you can tell a water snake from a cotton mouth is the head shape of a cotton mouth, and I'm not really talking about the triangular head. Yes, in a relaxed state, a cottonmouth will have a more triangular head because of its venom glands. That is true. But that's not always a great way to identify that snake. Because water snakes of every single species, if you get close enough to them and you bother them enough, what they'll do is they'll actually flatten their head out and they'll make it look triangular. Okay, so the triangular head is not always a uh, great way to tell because of these snakes mimicking it. But one thing about the heads though is that the head of the cottonmouth is uh, a lot more blocky, all right? It's a lot more squared off, it's more edgy. While the head of the water snake, it's not as choppy in its angles, it's a lot more streamlined and straight. That's another way you can sometimes tell a cottonmouth from a water snake is just the shape of its head. Now another thing about the heads of both of these snakes is that if you happen to see the very, very top of the heads of either of these snakes, if you look on the very top of the cottonmouth's head, you're not gonna be able to see its eyes, or you're at least not gonna be able to see them very well. With the water snakes, every species of them, if you look on the tops of their heads, you're gonna be able to see their eyes a lot better. Non-venomous and harmless water snakes, while they are swimming in the water, typically, not always, but typically, you're going to see that just the very top of their head is poking out of the water, and maybe just a little bit of its back. Now when a cottonmouth is swimming in the water, it's going to be completely inflated and it's going to be swimming on the very top of the water. So most of its body and its head is going to be swimming on the very top of the water. That's a really good way to tell if you see one swimming. Keep in mind, I have seen water snakes swimming with their bodies on top of the water and I have seen cottonmouths swimming with just their head above the water. So this is not 100% always going to work but it's a good way to kind of, you know, lean you in the right direction when you're identifying these snakes. Now, I'm sure you noticed when I was showing you all the defensive behaviors of this snake, the cottonmouth, it was wiggling its tail around, it was vibrating, and it was doing all kinds of things with its tail. You're not going to see water snakes do that. Water snakes of all species are not going to vibrate or wiggle their tail like a cottonmouth would. Same thing with the gaping the mouth open. I've never seen a water snake do that. Only cottonmouths do that, all right? So I'm sure you've heard a lot of people use the elliptical pupil method as a way that you can identify cottonmouths and copperheads from non-venomous snakes. That can technically work. Now, you have to get a good bit close to the snake to actually see the shape of the pupil. But if for some reason you happen to see the eye up close of either one of these snakes and it's up and down like a cat, it's going to be a cotton mouth, it's not going to be a water snake. Now, this does not always work because a lot of the times you'll see these snakes at nighttime. Cotton mouths during the nighttime, same thing with copperheads and rattlesnakes, their eyes are no longer elliptical because they have to let in a lot more light so their pupils actually round out just like a water snake would. So you can't always use that as a way to identify these snakes. So another thing that's good to keep in mind is that cotton mouths actually have heat pits. So basically what a heat pit is, it's another hole in between their nostril and their eye. A water snake does not have this. So for some reason, if you see two holes on the face, then you know it's a cotton mouth. So when I approach the water snake, generally water snakes are going to be very quick to run away. 
you noticed with the cotton mouth that he did not try to run away. A lot of the times what you'll find with cotton mouths is that they stand their ground. Now of course if you start handling a water snake and you catch it and you grab it then they're going to be more likely to stand their ground as this one is now. But in a general wild setting water snakes are a lot more likely to quickly flee away than a cotton mouth is. So if you approach one of these snakes and it holds its ground chances are it's this one. But then if you approach a snake and it tries to run away it's a lot more likely to be a water snake. All right, everybody. Well, I really hope you all have a better understanding on how to identify the water snake species that we get in the Mid-South versus the cottonmouth that uh, everybody confuses them for. I've got all my water snakes back in their bucket here. I've got the cottonmouth back in his bag. So the time has come. Let's go ahead and let them all go. All right, first snake we're letting go is our Midland water snake right here. All right, buddy. And there he goes. Look at how bright red he is. That is beautiful. So the next snake we're releasing is Mr. Yellow-bellied water snake here. There he goes. Next up we've got our gorgeous little diamondback water snake. I am right back underneath the bridge where I found this absolutely gorgeous Mississippi green water snake. It's time to let him go, so let's put him back in the water. Right back. All right, well the last water snake we've got to let go is uh, our beautiful little girl here, our uh, broad-banded water snake. I think she's ready to go home. Let's let her go. Here she goes. And off she goes, back into her lake home. And last but certainly not least, it's time to release our good friend, the cottonmouth. I'm just gonna leave him there. Uh, he'll find his way and I'm gonna head out too. All right, well, I hope you all now have a better understanding of what water snakes live in your area and how to identify them all from cottonmouths. If there's anything I want you all to get out of this video, it's not just how to identify these snakes, but also that nine out of 10 times, it's not really gonna matter which snake that you've got right in front of you, because at the end of the day, no matter what species it is, if you leave that snake alone, it's also gonna leave you alone and you'll be just fine. If you know someone that this video could potentially help out, go ahead, share it with them, share it with whoever you think might benefit from it, and uh, I will see you all on the next video. Have a good day, guys.